they drove old Dixie down And all the bells were ringing the night They drove old Dixie down And all the people were singing They went la 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 Hi, Art Fine, Art Fine's Poker Party coming to you from Hollywood. You can talk over me, that's okay. <laughs> we're, get, we're, get, we're getting the buzz now. Yeah. The um, winners losing him was a big deal. And coming to you from Santa change. Monica, the two people Santa talking Bada, while yeah. I'm talking He's are uh, uh, two return re recidivists, two, two people coming back. <laughs> uh, can't seem to get rid of them. We got, uh, we're out on the, on the street again. Left, we have it sounds rabbinical. <laughs> <laughs> Recidivist. Uh, on the left, we got Steve Kalinich, a poet. General great guy uh, who was on uh, just a week ago, and you're welcome. Welcome back, Steve. Thank you. Same outfit. How was your week? <laughs> it was great. <laughs> I slept in this stuff. No. Yeah. And next to him, we it's got good color. we got Gary Stewart, not the guy that did. You know, she's drinking singles. I'm, I'm drinking singles. She's drinking double. What was it? I'm. At, I'm she's Whatever happened to him? I know what happened. You know what happened to him? Yeah, like yeah, I'm definitely not that same person. We were at the same record company at different times. Yeah. No. Gary Stewart <laughs> uh, has been around Rhino Records. I remember when you worked at the store. I, know, I'm I do, and Westwood they Boulevard. still trying to forgive me for that. <laughs> we're, uh, a fundamental person in the beginnings of that record company. Now working for another music outlet, not to be named. <laughs> And uh, we're always glad to have you here. Uh, you were on the show. Give me a hand. Here, okay. Uh, you were on the show. I'm extremely glad to be back. <laughs> you were on the show. We don't have the name game, but the, let's the see. We have the name game, game thing. <laughs> right. Well, you know, I'd play that right now, except we don't have a cassette player anymore. The fame yeah. game. They're playing little I bits like of that. the song. Uh, sort of a nerd. You were on with Ira Robbins. Ira was part of that game, yeah. And I think Peter Holsapple maybe was on that show. That was like 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. And also, you were on just with you and me yeah. because Marshall Crenshaw didn't show up. He, we were waiting for him. It was called <laughs> waiting, waiting for Marshall. Marshall, very underrated artist, <laughs> still making good records, yeah. and has a radio show of his own, too. But a very overrated uh, map watcher because he was leaving Van Nuys yeah. coming to uh, I believe Eagle Rock and he just kept going ended up in Fullerton that's where non-linear yeah, geographist yeah, actually. did you I film it, we at it. <laughs> so we're glad to have both the these DVD guys here bonus and uh, you know what uh, last show we skipped the, uh, the, the, the the standard first question Steve's actually here as a guest of our guest because uh, Gary Stewart invited him on as well as I did but he may Glad jump. To have you. If, if Thank he, you, Gary. If he jumps up and leaves in the middle of the show, we know it's not uh, personal. He's got other appointments. So, but the f first question I forgot to ask Steve was, what was the first record you bought? The first record I bought, I think, was uh, Rock Around the Clock, Bill Haley and the Comets. That You're is too a, young that for is that is stuff. A, that is a great first record to have. That's up there with buying, like, Meet the Beatles. There are, like, five first good records. Yeah. The Anarchy in the UK might be one, or yeah. Nirvana, Nevermind. Yeah. You mean um, Sex Pistols, or, Anarchy? Yeah, yeah. or, yeah. Or in, the, or, in the, or in the 21st century, come on, Gary, come up with it. In the 21st century, yeah, I, couldn't I would you. say it's a like, Radiohead record. I'd say the first record yeah. you bought was in Rainbows, and you bought it online, and you got it, like, off their site, and that was your introduction to music you would be starting at a really iconic shifting place. I would say the 21st century, <laughs> since you didn't ask me, mm -hmm. is the one that you could mentally tune into your own channel without having to pay anything or like that, download it mentally and Well, that's conscious. real transcendence. <laughs> that's a, but that is the living manifestation, I think, of one of the verses of Zager and Evans in the year 2525. I think that's verse 7, isn't it? Or it sounds pretty good. <laughs> is it close to thus fucking their Zarathustra? <laughs> Since we do bounce around uh, subjects in this show, uh, on the book, Till the Cows Come Home, which is the history of Nebraska rock, we're on Nebraska Street right now, but we're not talking about that. They sadly, I, I, not shamefacedly, but sadly announced at the beginning before reading about all these local bands that you never heard of, but it's kind of cool, that the only band to emerge from Nebraska was Zager and Evans. So it's a, although. And are they a band? They're more like a duo. <laughs> and, uh, more like Seals well, and Cross. Because they're, they're, but they're not, the fellows that wrote the book are not, don't have a heavy lineage, because if they did, they would have gone back to Winoni Harris. Mr. Blues, yeah. who's the greatest, and he's also from Omaha. And uh, now uh, you're you're an LA guy forever, right? You're forever, yeah. Forever. I mean, not at the beginning. I was had the first four years in Chicago, but oh, okay. then I hit the road, yeah. wanting is to you know, have and a pop? career yeah. as an itinerant power pop fan. Just <laughs> <laughs> heard this is where it's at. You didn't stick around for the uh, what? 
Chicago bands of the 60s than uh, like uh, Ides of March or... Yeah, at age two, my parents wouldn't let me go see the Chicago Loop or <laughs> I go to the Dunwich Records office and see <laughs> by the way, Shadows uh, of Night. By the way, uh, you know that Gloria by Shadows of Night is really a Chicago record in every sense because Chicago has never been progressive in any sense about anything. I mean, you, you couldn't buy Fanny Hill in like 1968. How about music? Wait, what about Washington? What? Dinah Washington? Harold. Harold yeah. Washington. Yeah, you're right. I'm sorry. Politics. <laughs> music. Well, culturally, it's always been backwards because I lived there and felt it was very repressive. Mm -hmm. And uh, Shadows of Night version of Gloria is not like a competing version. It's the version we can play on most of American radio because it doesn't say she comes up to my room. It was expurgated, and that's why they killed him. That's why they Didn't killed him. Didn't the original that. version it was she asked uh, the parents' permission, and then <laughs> a couple other verses like that? Well, that's like the verse that. they cut out of the, the them version. She reads from the Book of Virtues. They just they had to cut that out. That was the bigger hit in America. That was, I think, it was maybe a number one or number two record, and the them record was nowhere. They sort of scooped him, and only and only later do people get that the Van Morrison version, the them version, is the definitive version. There. Are, Okay, so, and you were in Binghamton, New York, where you grew up, uh, first record, Rock Around the Clock, and did you go to concerts? I mean... Yeah, I loved it. I used to go to Friday night dances and wear pink argyle socks and, uh -huh. and DA haircuts and the whole deal. I was really into that whole thing. So then, did anybody travel through Binghamton? Did you go to New York City? Well, well, did you see it, anything really cool? Yeah, I saw Bill Haley. I huh. saw all the, the first... You know the Alan Freed shows that they yeah, come through there. Uh, yeah, but they used to have something called like the Hop, or yeah. you'd go to the Hop and they'd have dance contests and people, Frankie Lyman and uh, Pat the Cat Monoford. You mm -hmm. probably don't even remember some of these groups. That group, what's that group? Uli Bapa Um Bapa Uli Bapa Um. Those kind of groups. <laughs> what do up groups? Yeah, those kind. Well, I know Frankie Lyman. No, I you're killing me with that because I, I knew yeah, the, I know the Art riff. probably knows that. But does any of that, those kind of groups, I'm Bill trying to... Haley still a bit of a Western swing outfit then? <laughs> still kind of. Yeah. But, and then you'd get, and then later you'd get the, uh, just all the rock groups went through Binghamton for a while. Dick Clark did a show there when he had that show, and, they, and there was another rock show. I forgot the name of it. Mm -hmm. You guys might remember. Yeah. It was fun. So, so then, as a, I don't know that you're an inveterate, music fan. I know you like poetry, which is what you do. I you love like music. music. I was a rock. And I, I started out rock and roll. The po I didn't get into that with no. you, but the poetry grew out of that. I started out, good golly, Miss Molly, yeah. rock around the clock, all that. Yeah. I, I mean, I even could do the Italian version of rock around the clock. I was really into it. I'll say. So then, but as far as going to shows, in college, did you go to folk shows or did you, did you get a live I, music in, experience? In college, I, I changed, but when I was younger, when the rock and roll was our whole life. The, couldn't wait to put on the next record. Right. You know, I had uh, Jim Dickinson on the show uh, from Memphis, and he, was, he had a great story about how in 1955 or 6, let's say, something comes out, like Maybelline, and you, it catches a kid's attention, and how great that is, what a wonderful thing, but who knew there'd ever be another record? You know, you thought, okay, it's going to be Rosemary Clooney and stuff, and, everything, and this great thing came out. And then they kept sneaking out at closer intervals. Like you watch the whole thing, like a disease come in and, and strangle the Sinatras and take over with Love the Elvis records. I love yeah. those, those records. It's like a novelty record in people's eyes. Yeah, yeah. well. Um, by the way, Chuck Berry, in his, in his rhyming, mm -hmm. Brown Eyed Handsome Man, or maybe it's another one, he says that to, in order to rhyme, he'll, he'll make things up to make them rhyme. And he says, the count was four and three. <laughs> Two and three, yeah. The baseball game, the count was two and three. So he just stuck that in the lyrics? Because it, he couldn't say three and two because it didn't rhyme. That so is, by the way, I think um, one of his best songs, but yeah. Buddy Holly beats him on that, the Buddy Pretty Holly version. Pretty good one. Which reminds me, too, of Little Richard, oddly enough, uh, not She's Got It, but uh, Ready Teddy. I think Ready Teddy is best by yeah. maybe Buddy Holly, maybe Elvis. Yeah, They're Ready both Teddy. Rock. Doesn't Bill Haley do that, too? Yeah. Yeah. That's a great song. Yeah. That was a great, that was a real a, dancing song. It came out later, belatedly on Holly, it came out. But that great movie. rock book, A Wap Bop Loom Up, A Wap Bam Boom, that came out that talked about that whole Wap Bop Loom Up generation. Did you ever hear that book? I don't know that one by it, name. It's like Keith Eltham gave it to me. Keith yeah. Eltham was a PR guy for The Who. 
uh -huh. that came later. But but he was that was the book of you know Little Richard, all those people. What what about that with your experience? The, you you came out here in '62. You came out to Los Angeles, and started and you were into doing your poetry then. By the way, I'm as do I have it here? Yes, I do. I didn't even mention you it. You might get an extra plug from me because this is <laughs> a, a, a subsequent plug. show. Uh, uh, a World of Peace mm -hmm. by Steve Kalinich is a poetry album of great renown and just released after being re just released in 2008 after being recorded in mid-1969. And uh, uh, thereabouts. Under Brian Wilson's tutelage. Cole, Cole. Was that done for Brother Records originally? Uh, no, that wasn't. I was a Brother artist, but it wasn't done for Brother. So, uh, okay, well, uh, Gary, when... Um, you, I've asked you this, but it was 20 years ago. What was the first record? Cosmos Factory by Creedence Clearwater Revival. Wow. Um, wow. <clears throat> purely because it had the appearance of a greatest hits record. I mean, it had three singles, which meant six because they had double A sides, and it looked like there was no way I could lose for that value. <laughs> As a result of that record, I got turned on to rockabilly. I got tur turned on to R&B. I think um, that was the first time I'd heard Before You Accuse Me is on that record. Mm. Um, wow. Ubi Doobie. Yeah. Oh. Creed and Sung. Heard it through the grapevine. Oh I did not God. know there was a Marvin Gaye original when I got that record. I know everybody that comes on the show likes to go, yeah, I was born knowing Bo Diddley. I don't want to get technical but on you, but there was an original by Gladys Knight. Gladys Knight and the Pips did the first version yeah. before Norman Whitfield uh -huh. like, did, did it the Bo way Diddley. he wanted. I'm glad I didn't say it. Very cool. Very but cool. by then, I think the Gladys Knight version was invisible for yeah, a while. Sure, I sure. Mean, it wasn't a contemporary but, cover. But it was a hit first, and I was just thinking about that because Norman Whitfield passed away, mm -hmm. and I found out that the way he wanted to do the record was the way he did it with Marvin Gaye. Oh. But Barry Gordy said, like, well, let's go a little pop, bit more pop, pop and he proved himself, so let him try it with, with um, Marvin Gaye. And in many ways, if you look at a record like Smiling Faces sometimes, you hear that sort of rattle, those sort of ominous effects. Mm -hmm. I think that was m that the Marvin Gaye record was probably the first Norman Whitfield production in that vein, or I at see. least the one that broke through. I just thought my first concert was Bo Diddley when, oh, really? when he brought it up. Oh, wow. Bo Diddley, Bo Diddley, where you been? We love that. We, he was like the greatest big to us, big as Elvis as everything. And Bo Diddley was was a happening for me. And in his mind he was too. I mean, he was a great <laughs> guy. I mean, he's the greatest guy. There's a lot of un a lot of unexplored territory <coughs> with Bo is the Bo Diddley ballads. They're quite good, the chess ones anyway. And I met another crazy artist. Do you remember hearing of SQ Reader before Escarita, Little Escarita, yeah. You saw Escarita? We played the same show in the Get little coffee here. shop in Hollywood. He goes, Lord, good. you know, and he would jump on the piano with his feet and everything, and I would do the same poetry. Like I'm doing this album in the same act, and he loved me. He says, "Don't you know they were talking when God said the grass beneath my feet? He was talking about marijuana, brother. He used to tell me that stuff." You must have tried to get him for one of your midnight New Year's Eve SQ shows, Reader <laughs> like pumping piano my, productions. We played a couple of shows in Hollywood together in, in a little clubs. Escarita. Yeah. yeah. Do you have an approximate time for that? Hey, there's a phone call. But besides that, do you know what year that it's was approximately? Oh, okay. We'll take Gary. Do you know what year that was? I have no idea. Oh, okay. So, Gary. Probably early 60s <laughs> would be my guess. Um, so, with the a great color start, was blue. Is, uh, the mood is was Willie dark. And, uh, Don on the Corner on that one? On no, Don on the Corner is on Willie and the Poor Boys, oh, right, which right. I bought for my brother um, as his birthday present the same month. Oh, okay. um, but that record was... I just got the lyrics to that. You know, have, have you experienced any recent lyrical aware awakenings? In other words, songs you've heard 10 million times that suddenly came to you. Now... Willie and the Poor Boys, what, are playing, playing what, play, play, what is the next line? I thought Willie it was bring a nickel, tap your feet. Bring a nickel, tap your feet. You actually heard that or you read it somewhere? Because I thought it was playing a nickel tambourine. I could no, never bring understand. No, bring a nickel, tap your feet. It was bring about communal music. I it was about it, now street that I, busking. Now that I read it on a lyric sheet, I understood it, but I right. never got I, it I'm understanding that. lyrics that I never did before. You know what? And also, I, I have to apologize. I have to go. Well, thank I'm, you for starting the show. Hey, I'm grateful to you guys, and I hope I didn't blow you any of your No, stuff. this you is are, good. We got the do-op memories. And I'm very grateful. Art, fine, thank you.